Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be continuing the series on DaVinci Resolve. Uh, last episode, I showed you guys how to use the scopes within DaVinci Resolve. And the way you bring up your scopes, if you're on a single monitor, if you're on a dual monitor, you don't have to worry about it. They're showing it pretty much at all times. But on a single monitor, you hit Command, Shift, W. And unfortunately, it doesn't have like a separate window that it attaches. And you have to kind of find a space to put this over. You can grab the corner of it and expand it and you can shrink it. And uh, you can put it in a different location on your screen. Uh, you can turn on this uh, single view to do uh, one, one scope at a time, two scopes at a time, or uh, four scopes at a time. So I'm going to close that. And if you're on a, if you're on a PC, it's Control shift w On a Mac, it's Command-Shift-W to toggle your scopes on and off. All right, so let's start going through some of the tools. These are some of the advanced tools I'll be going in in later episodes. Right now, I'm going to be uh, starting on the on the color wheels here. Color wheels are basic tools that you'll see in almost any color grading software. They kind of have their own terminology for defining. It's not their own terminology. It's widely accepted terminology, but uh, it seems like every uh, color grading software you get into or color grading aspect of like an editing software or any color grading uh, aspect of, of a, a, say like an editing software like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, uh, they'll have their own names for these things here. But uh, lift, gamma, gain, and offset. What these basically are is the lift essentially refers to the low lights in your image, the darker portions of your image. Gamma you can kind of look at as exposure. So 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 yeah, the lift are are the darks, are the blacks, the darks, the the low lights of the of the image. Uh, gamma is the exposure or kind of the mid range of your image. Uh, kind of the mid grays and gain is the highlights of your image so, so you have these three basic uh, the, the shadows the mids and the highlights in your image or the whites in your image and those and uh, and these controls control those regions of your image now what the offset does is it controls the overall image if I'm going to bring up let's bring up an example here control shift W we'll bring up my scopes here and we're just going to go a single form and do waveform here now the waveform, if we grab our uh, lift, the, the, now by the way, these are hue wheels here to change the colors in those areas, and then these are tone sliders. Tone sliders deal mostly with luminance. They affect the luminance of your image. So if we grab our the luminance in our image here and we start dragging this, look what this does. This controls mostly the bottom portion of your waveform here, and it's darkening the darks by bringing those down. The gamma, you'll see kind of a stretch in the mid-region of your waveform right there. It's mostly controlling the mid-region of your waveform. And then the gain will control the highlights of your image, will control the upper portion of your image. Now the offset, watch what this does. This just grabs the whole darn thing and pushes it up and down, the whole thing. A little different because gamma kind of grabs the mid-portion, where offset grabs pretty much the entire image and just slides all the whole thing up and down. I'm going to click on these and reset all of my... Uh, image all, all my settings that I did there. These reset. This will reset the lift. This will reset the gamma, the gain, and the offset. So this is similar similar here where uh, the, the color, the hue, you can shift the color in the low lights and it, it will start affecting the low lights first but then it will start gaining, uh, gaining on the entire image once you push it over so far. Uh, you can see that even kind of shifting the, the whites to different color and those, those are the highlights. But initially it will start affecting the dark portions of your image first. Gamma will affect the colors in your mids, and gain will affect your, your the colors in your highlights. So if we shift that up to orange for our mids and gain, we take that down to the opposite to complementary uh, region there. See if we put these kind of on polar opposites, the gain and the and the gamma, you're seeing some reds down in this area, and then the uh, the lights up here and the highlight, you're seeing blues up in the highlights mostly. So you can see kind of that extreme uh, difference in those uh, areas when we push them to their their opposite regions there. And you're also getting, you'll also start seeing banding as well because we're making that sort of, the gains in gamma are, are somewhat close, so we're starting to really pull those apart and rip them apart because they're so close to each other. Also on the primary wheels page here, you have this bar down at the bottom. And this bar has two sections, one and two sections, which will give you different numbers for different areas. Uh, we're just going to go through the basics on, on these right here. But contrast is basically spreading the highlights and the darks away from each other. And you can see that happening on the waveform there. And it's creating what's called contrast. And look at our image, what we're getting as a result. We're getting a very contrasty image as opposed to if we go the opposite direction, which is a very flat image. So if we get this really close together like that, look how flat that looks. And this is the waveform is flattened and the image looks very flat. And then you take it out and get this contrasty look. And there you go. Now the pivot point is where it decides to use as the midpoint for your contrast. So you, now you can see where it decides to stretch. Now uh, as we move that pivot point up, it's stretching more from this uh, this region right about here. 
if we change that pivot point and uh, take it down further. Now the midpoint is up here toward the, the highlights. So the pivot point is going to change where it's stretching the contrast from and, and the pivot point will change how the contrast is treated on your image. Saturation here, you got a basic slider for saturation to increase your saturation. If we go to our vector scope, you can see the saturation, the intensity of the colors uh, blooming out and becoming more saturated, or you can pull this down to desaturate it and that pulls out, out all color. Now your hue here is to rotate your hue on the vector scope basically. It's, it takes all your hue and just rotates it around the color circle. You see that it's not like adding any saturation or any variance in, in this waveform. It's just strictly rotating it on this uh, on a pinpoint there. And then you can see the see your image changing completely different colors up there. This is really nice, especially when you're working with skin tone, you're trying to get the skin tone along the skin tone line. It's really helpful to kind of get the colors accurate. Now to kind of explain Luma Mix here, I'm gonna to go to an, the next tab over from primary wheels, which is primary bars. Primary bar, bars has very similar uh, control over your lift, gamma gain, your, your darks, your gamma, your exposure and highlights and offset by grabbing these sliders over here. And what you have is you have a luminance level for your entire darks here. This is basically your luminance level here. And then as you move over, you've got red channel, green channel, and blue channel in each one of these. Now think about this. When you grab uh, an entire color channel and you dip it, you will have lost like almost uh, like a third of the luminance if you drop your red completely out of there. If you drop your red channel completely out of there. So what it's doing here is it's boosting the green and the blue to maintain the same level of, uh, of luminance, uh, the same brightness level of luminance. On the basically on the Y channel because you dropped a full channel of color to, uh, to pure darkness there, to pure darkness at least in the shadows there. If we drop all the, the gamma and the gain as well, so it all flattens just that red all the way down there. And then it boosts these ones up here to compensate for the brightness levels. So your Luma Mix is there essentially to, uh, if you turn this off completely, now when you bring down the red channel, it doesn't compensate the brightness levels. Notice how the, the image will get darker by dropping out the red, uh, even, especially in the gamma here. Drop out the red, the image is going to get darker. So it does not compensate by boosting up the, the green and the blue. And you can, do that by, you can do that by percentage there. So that's what the Luma Mix does by uh, standard it's at 100. Moving on to number two on this thing down here, we're going to click on number, number two. And on number two, you have your basic temperature and tint sliders. Temperature is going to uh, is going to mess with the complementary colors of blue versus orange, essentially. So if you're trying to add more warmth to your image, you're going to slide this to the right and it adds more warmth and takes out the blue. And you can see that on your balance parade over here. And if you take it toward the other direction, it's going to boost the blues instead of the orange. So if you're just trying to slightly cool it off or slightly warm it up, that's what the slider is good for. The next one over, tint, uh, deals with the other two kind of complementary colors, magenta and green. So if you're trying to green shift your image and get, uh, boost up your green, or you're trying to get a little more bluish, it, but notice how it blend, from magenta it brings up the blues and the, and the reds at the same time you get magenta. But th this is basically your green shift right there. Those are kind of the basic uh, tools that are on the primary bars, and we showed you some of the uh, on the primary wheels, on the primary bars, what they do. They really help to control the red, green, and blue values within the gain, gamma, and lift. So a little bit more uh, power in, in your bars than there is in the hue wheels. And log is something completely different we'll be getting into later. This is kind of more extreme version where it's treating flat footage, and it treats it a lot more, uh, I guess, exponentially. Uh, exaggerated on its moves so when you slide it it's it's going to be a, a little bit more definite and a little more aggressive because log footage is very flat so it's, it's going to be performing it a lot more aggressively but we'll get into that we'll get into some tutorials on that in the future but I'm going to go back to primary wheels these are the basic tools that you use here and oftentimes primary bars if you need a little bit more control uh, down here on one you got contrast pivot saturation hue you're going to be using those quite often as well as temperature and tint these other ones we'll get into later these get a little bit more complex